Don 2.0 is one of the last games Monolith Productions ever made and was released in 2003, a year after No One Lives Forever 2. It's a hugely original and creative title that's let down by some subpar elements that ruin what really could have been a much more solid experience. The story follows on from the plot of the film to an extent. You play as Alan Bradley's son, Jet, working for the large software development company Encom. Jet soon finds himself digitized by a program named Mathria to assist in removing a virus implanted into the company's system by a rival corporation called Fcon. Stuck within the computer, you're now on the run, assisted by friendly programs and hunted by hostile ones. The main goal is to let your old man know about FCON's plans whilst trying to avoid getting de-rezzed. Anyone familiar with FPS games will be pretty comfortable with Tron on the whole. The only real difference is the terms used for everything. Progressing through locked doors is done by acquiring permissions, which function like keys essentially. And these are found in something called nodes, which themselves might also require certain permissions to be opened. You still with me? Throughout the game you obtain build points which are spent on upgrades referred to as routines which are installed into memory blocks in a skill tree window of sorts. These routines can be related to anything from adding protection against damage to displaying the name and health points of other programs in the game world. Other weapons also fit into this category and have to be installed in similar fashion. Routines can also be upgraded to a maximum of two times, either by finding the upgraded routine in levels or using little upgrade bots that can be found as well. It sounds more complex than it is, and it really doesn't take too long to get the hang of it. By the end of the game, you will get your hands on most, if not all, of the routines anyway, and they can be swapped in and out at any time, which always means if a certain build isn't working, it can easily be moved around. The only downside is that you might find yourself frequently stopping to change your skill loadout, which can really ruin the feel and pace of a level, but I'll touch on that later in the review. One thing you'll probably notice early on is just how incredible the game looks, which is impressive considering it's over 10 years old. They've really captured the feel and theme of the films, and you can tell that a lot of love and attention to detail went into the visuals overall. The levels are based around the components and workings of a computer system, from firewalls to even the internet itself, and Monolith have made sure that each level feels unique, and they've achieved that and then some. Sound for the most part holds up to the same high standards as other Monolith games, though the soundtrack and some of the voice acting is a little bit off. You better believe it. The soundtrack has a real MIDI feel to it at times, and some dialogue comes across as a little bit weak. It's a bit of a departure from their last game, No One Was Forever 2, where both the sound and music were excellent in every conceivable way. I found Mathria saving to disc now. Early on, the game gives you something of a stealth tutorial, even including lean buttons to see around corners. You're also given a routine that allows for your footsteps to become somewhat silent, but this soon turns out to be totally useless as enemies have super hearing, and the moment an enemy sees you, which can happen from the other side of the map I might add, they won't stop chasing you until either you kill them or they kill you. Which means that you're going to spend the majority of your time in combat, which in and of itself has a fair few problems. Combat is made up of swarms of hitscan type enemies who will kill you in a matter of hits, even on the normal difficulty setting. Even when you've got all of the armor upgrades, it will still easily overwhelm you and deal some serious damage. And being hit scanners means that they can hit you every single goddamn time, no matter how far away they happen to be. For the first few chapters of the game, the only weapon you've got is the disc, something that the films have made iconic, and yet it feels totally underwhelming in the game. The concept is pretty cool, you can use the disc as a weapon, as well as a shield to deflect other incoming discs. Enemies also wield the disc and throw them in an absolute flash, which means that getting the timing down to block them is extremely difficult. They're always going to be at different distances, which makes it hard to gauge how fast it can be traveling, and then consider that you rarely only fight one at a time, making getting a feel for things near impossible. Quite often I just find myself sneaking out from corners and throwing the disc before hiding again. Yeah, it's a pretty crappy way to play the game, but it's also quite often the only way to get past large groups of enemies. It does get easier later in the game when you get some of the better guns like the ball launcher and the sniper rifle, but the first few chapters are just abysmal. Then there's the so-called corrupted enemies, infected programs who threw viruses at you which can corrupt your routines, making them totally useless. The only way to fix this is to spend 20-something seconds removing the virus from each and every single upgrade routine separately. Hopefully before it spreads to a nearby routine, in which case you'll have to start all over again. This brings me onto one of my biggest issues with this game, and that's the way that skills are handled. Now, skill points are made up of health, energy, 
weapon efficiency, and then the rate at which you download data, identify routines, and purge viruses from your system. My issue is with the latter two skills. Now why in all hell should this be an upgradable skill? There is never any single instance in the game where downloading something faster is going to make something easier. You are always downloading things whenever you're not in combat, and this goes as well for removing viruses. I mean, you're not going to remove the viruses when you're still fighting the enemies that gave you the virus, because chances are you'll just catch it again anyway. It's a lot like the search skill in No One Lives Forever 2, where Kate Archer would have to stop and spend 5 or so seconds searching enemy corpses or filing cabinets for pieces of intel. And in Tron, once again, it does little other than totally ruin the pace of the game. Because every time you want to search a node, for instance, you just end up standing there for 10 seconds whilst the data downloads. This harks back to what I was saying earlier about how the pace of the game is all messed up because of things like this, and when combined with all of these other little niggling annoyances, it really kind of sucks. Even the light cycle race is something that's probably one of the more memorable scenes from the film, is ruined here because the AI drives like an absolute retard. And the so-called arenas are really poorly thrown together. It really annoys me overall because there are some legitimately good ideas in this game and it really should have been a masterpiece. But when the shooting, the core mechanic of the game, is downright sloppy, it just ruins the whole damn thing. It's easily the best Tron game ever made, which isn't really saying much because I think you can count the total Tron games made on one hand. Like so many other Monolith games, it's stuck in copyright limbo, so feel free to download it from anywhere you can. I'd probably still suggest it at the end of the day, despite all the problems that it has. But for a Monolith title, it's just not as polished as you'd expect. If you can look past the crappy combat, you might get a few hours of enjoyment out of it. But if you get irritated easily by cheap, frustrating gameplay, then you'll probably just want to give this one a miss. But hey, it sure does look pretty.